In this unit, we're going to talk about congruence. So the first thing is talking about congruence through transformations. So a couple key ideas here, one of them being that when we talk about congruence, we know that that means the, the figures have the exact same shape and the exact same size. So what that really means is if we were to overlap the figures, then they would have to match up perfectly. So everything would be exactly the same when they're overlapped. And then the other thing that we're going to talk about, which is going to be the highlight for today, is that two figures are congruent if and only if there exists one or more rigid motions which will map one figure onto the other. So this is really what we're going to be looking at today. This whole idea, and it's a big idea for the year, that if you want to prove that two figures are the same, shape and size, so if, two, if you want to prove that two figures are congruent, you just have to show that you can take one figure and map it onto the other using one or more rigid motions. So reminder what rigid motions are. So rigid motions are your translations. So you're sliding an object. Reflection, so you're flipping an object. And rotations, meaning you're turning an object. So those are your only rigid motions. Other names for rigid motions we talked about before, isometries was a big one. Um, rigid transformations, you might see congruence transformations, but typically you're going to see rigid motions or isometries, and it means that they keep um, the figures the same shape and size, so they're going to preserve congruence, meaning they're going to preserve the angle measures and they're going to preserve the side lengths. They're going to stay the same. So um, that might be something worth writing down as well. When we say the figures have the same shape and size, that really means that they have the same sides, so same side lengths, and same angle measures. So those rigid motions are going to preserve those things. They're going to keep the side lengths the same, and they're going to keep the angle measures the same. And that's how, overall, you're going to have the same shape and the same size. Look at the symbol here. This symbol here is the symbol for congruence. So this means congruent. So if you were to read that, you would read it as congruent. And the symbol up top stands for the similarity between them, which means the same shape. So that's going to be the same angle measures. And then the equals mean they have the same measures, which means that the side lengths are the same. So together, you have the same shape and the same um, size for congruent. So if you look down below, we're going to focus on transformation. So how can we show that there's transformations that are going to map one figure onto the other so that they're exactly the same shape and the same size, meaning same side length, same angle measures, um, to prove that they're congruent to each other. So if you look, here's an example of two congruent figures because all that occurred was a rotation. Here we had a flip or a reflection and then a translation. So what happened was you flip the bird then slide it down. And then for these here we have all three of these are going to be congruent because all we did was we just slid them so in all directions here. So the blue one slid down, the purple one slid to the right if you were starting at the red one. So these ones were just slides. Um, here we have two congruent designs, so they're congruent because all we did was we turned one. So basically, if you look, it just flipped upside down, so a rotation of 180 degrees to get from one to the other. Um, and then it looks like it slid as well if you're not looking at it as it's on itself or you're not looking at the center of rotation. But basically, it turned upside down and then it slid. Here we have congruent circles because it was just a translation. And then down below here, we have a translation as well. We just took the figure and slid it. So all of these figures are congruent because you end up with um, some type of rigid motion that occurred, one or more rigid motions that occurred to map one figure onto the other. So let's go ahead and try some examples of how do you actually write this up and how do you actually do one of these proofs. So these proofs aren't going to be um, as formal as when we do what's called Euclidean proofs in a little while. So for these proofs, we're just going to kind of write it up like paragraph style. So the key idea, remember, from the front page is that two figures are congruent if and only if you can map um, if one can be mapped onto the other by one or more rigid motions. So that's what we're going with. So if I'm asked this question, is quadrille 
quadrilateral QRST congruent to quadrilateral UVWX. That means I'm going to start with, I'm just going to read these left to right. So I'm going to start with this quadrilateral QRST. And I need to see if it's congruent to quadrilateral UVWX, which really means is there a transformation that occurred? Is there a rigid transformation that occurred to map one onto two? So the easiest thing to do is you might be able to look at it right away and say, okay, I can see what occurred. But if you can't, go in the order of the letters here. So Q, R, R, S, and you're just going around, just following that order. Do the same thing here. So U, V, and see how the arrows go in the same direction. So these figures have the same orientation. So that means that they're direct isometries that occurred or direct isometry occurred. So same orientation means that it was either going to be a translation or a rotation. And if I look, I can see that the figure didn't turn in any way from one to two. So that means I know that it's going to be a translation. So that means if I can show that there's a translation that'll map each point in the pre-image to each point in the image, I know that the figures are congruent. So if I start at Q, well, Q would have to go to U. So if I went from Q, I went one, two, three, four, five, six. So I went six units right, and then down one, two, three. And then see if it works for R. So one, two, three, four, five, six, down one, two, three. Same thing for S, one, two, three, four, five, six, down one, two, three, that works. And then you can check the last one, one, two, three, four, five, six, down one, two, three. So a translation of right six and down three would map quadrilateral one onto quadrilateral two. So the answer is, are they congruent? Yes, we would say, so this is how we're going to write it up. We're going to say yes, quad. QRST is congruent to quadrilateral UVWX because a translation of, and remember that one of the notations is this mapping notation, so a translation of um, X plus 6 because it was to the right 6 and then Y minus 3 since it was down 3. So a translation of this maps quadrilateral. So the first one that I started with was QRST. So it's going to map or take quadrilateral QRST onto quadrilateral UVWX and translations are rigid motions which preserve angle measures and side lengths. So you're going to see all of these problems are going to be very similar to that. So you have to mention first of all what transformation you use or which rigid motion you've used to map the one figure onto the other. So I mentioned that was a translation and you're being specific with this. You don't want to just say a translation. You want to actually give the specific transformation. And then once you've done that, you need to mention, well, why does that make them congruent? Well, it makes them congruent because translations are rigid motions. You got to refer back to this property here. So translations are rigid motions. And since we found a rigid motion that maps one figure onto the other, those figures must be congruent. So it's because translations are rigid motions, which are preserving or keeping the angle measures and side lengths the same. So that's the process. You're going to see this is going to be very similar for all of these. So if we go to the second one here, first thing you want to do is identify where you're starting. So I'm always going to start on the left. So this will be my number one. This will be number two. And so that means this is one. This is two. 
Then you want to look at the order of the letters. So follow the order up here. So it went Q, R, S, T. And then this one was U, V, going around this way. So you can see that the order is the same. So it's the same orientation. which means it was a translation or a rotation. So for this one, it looks as if the figure turned. So it didn't just slide, you actually see this turning upward. So that means it had to have been a rotation. So then we just have to decide, well, what happened? So the figure moved in this direction if we're starting with number one going on to number two, which means it moved clockwise. And it moved one quadrant. So if it moved one quadrant, that would mean 90 degrees. And the center of rotation, if you're trying to figure that out, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, it's For me, I can just see that it's at 0, 0. Because if you look at S to, um, let's say, W, that, that became W, you can see that that distance is the same. I went over 1, 2, 3, 4, then up 1. Then here I went over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4. So the center would be at the origin. Same thing applies for Q and U. So you can see that you have a 90 degree angle here because it was one quadrant. And you can see that it would all, the vertex of the angle would have to be at the origin. Now if you can't tell, remember that you could connect these two points, construct the perpendicular bisector, and then connect, let's say, these two points, construct the perpendicular bisector, and where the perpendicular bisectors cross, that's where the center is going to be. So that's an option too. Um, so anyways, I know that the center is 0, 0, so I can go ahead and I can say yes, quad Q, R, S, T is congruent to quad U, V, W, X because a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise around zero zero maps the first quadrilateral so quad so it's important to make sure that whatever you numbered you're saying that that one number one maps onto number two because otherwise the direction would have changed if I started here I would have been going counterclockwise so you want to make sure that you say it maps quadrilateral which is number one here so QR ST onto quad um, UVWX and rotations are rigid motions. Are rigid motions which preserve um, angle measures and side lengths. So for this one, again, notice that I've mentioned specifically what happened. So it was a rotation 90 degrees clockwise around 0, 0. And then I said that that maps figure 1 onto figure 2. And I mentioned again that rotations are rigid motions, which are preserving the angle measures and side lengths, which is what's making them congruent. So th these are really like paragraph-style proofs. So you can't leave anything out. You do have to go through and do this whole thing.